very nice comments on our videos, especially our long distance hiking and while camping ones. So thank you kindly for those. And a viewer recently asked whether I have any tips for those starting out making adventure videos and how to make them entertaining, interesting. So this is my 10 tips on how to make a compelling adventure video. Running down the same road Like so many times before I never felt as lonely But I'm trying not to show So tip number one, and this is the biggest of all the tips, tell a story. In fact, tell your story, that's key. I can appreciate when you're starting out, it's a bit daunting. You maybe feel a bit embarrassed to be getting in front of the camera. Much easier just to take scenery shots and uh, not have to deal with that. Maybe narrate it if you're not comfortable in front of the camera, but better still, if they can see you, they can connect with you that much easier. It really makes all the difference if you can present yourself and essentially set out what you're about to do, point out whether this is your first time, whether you've done it many times, and what's special about this particular adventure. On some trips, I suppose you might say to yourself, well, you know, I'm climbing a mountain, what's to tell? I'm starting at the bottom, I get to the top, little celebration, then I go back down again. Let me demonstrate by way of example. Here we have the adventurer behind the camera doing an opening video pan scenery scene. Compared to the next clip, which shows him introducing his adventure. Hello, well, I'm about to set off on a very long walk. I'm gonna start from here on this hill. I'm gonna walk all the way to the sea through the evening and through the night. Uh, a little bit nervous because I haven't done anything like this before and I'm scared of the dark and I forgot to bring a coat. So yeah, I have to apologize for the inexperienced goofiness of my younger twin brother there, but I uh, hope we're all in agreement that the second take was more interesting and more informative way of starting an adventure video. Tip number two is to get comfortable with the fact that adventure video making is a learning process. And to get anywhere near an end result that you're truly happy with is going to take you years, if not decades. So I should tell you that one folks, but it's true. I mean, we've been making videos for over 20 years and I can safely say that I'm not completely happy with the end results, but I'm learning on everyone. Uh, I think I'm putting some pretty decent material out there and I'm learning on the job um, from you know planning the trip, capturing the video, and then stitching it all together at the end. And by way of cringeworthy example, check out this showreel of some of our earlier footage and I've put some titles in trying to explain what not to do if you can. How about that for an idyllic camp, eh? Mr. Grundy. Trudos Mountains. <laughs> and a uh, little Jeep Safari in there. Come out as well. Sounds good. Okay, please put it in. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So the key message I wanted to put across in this tip was for those of you starting out making videos, don't hold off because you think the output's gonna be painfully average and don't hold off because you're waiting until you can afford that perfect camera gear. Presumably most of you have got a pretty decent mobile phone that'll capture video. So, you know, what are you waiting for? Plan your next trip, take it along, capture the footage, and see how it turns out. So tip number three is to make sure you capture all of the highs and the lows. And the lows, folks. I can imagine most of you will find it quite easy to take video of the highlights. Obviously that's when your emotion's at its highest and you know in terms of the celebrations, the adventure action and the beautiful scenery shots, that's just when it comes naturally. But what's maybe more challenging is to go to the effort of capturing all of the lows. A story with only highlights is kind of interesting, not potentially telling the full story but it's actually the low points which are probably more compelling to watch as a viewer, where you go through hardship, obstacles to overcome, and the viewer will be much more empath empathetic, is that a word? Empathetic uh, about when you reach the end of your adventure, if they can appreciate the highs and the lows. So classic times where you might uh, be reluctant to capture the lows, uh, there's three things that I can think of. One at the beginning or the end of the day when you're tired and you can't be bothered to get the camera out. Two is in adverse weather conditions. Uh, just so happens we've got snow around us at the moment and I'm freezing my yeah. off. Uh, but I really want to get this shot. 
So I've gone to the effort of getting cold. And three is where maybe there's impending danger. Maybe you've got a fellow hiker who's fallen off the edge of a cliff. I'm not suggesting put their safety on pause whilst you get your camera out and get it on film. But if you feel it's safe, uh, it does make for excellent video if you can capture those sort of high energy points. Over time, it'll come naturally. Uh, if you feel your emotion building for whatever reason, in terms of danger or tiredness, uh, now I get a trigger to say, ooh, I should probably put that on video since it's uh, quite an interesting development. But it will take time for that instinct to develop. But yeah, super important. And tip number four, said in my best national lottery voice, keep your camera handy. This is really important, folks, in terms of, uh, you know, getting a good full account of the trip. And in case of highs and lows, which happen unexpectedly, uh, you're right there, ka -ching, to get the shot. You'll have probably seen on most of our long distance hiking videos, I've always got this big lump in DSLR around my neck and that's the reason why. Um, I have tried on occasions putting the camera in the backpack and it is nicer without that, you know, worn one and a half kilos around your neck. But whenever I do that, I always miss shots, uh, either because of the timing or because I get to the end of the day, I just can't be bothered to get the camera out. I just want to get to camp. So yeah, keep your main camera handy, uh, around your neck or some sort of side pouch, something like that, really helps to get good footage. And for when it's bad weather days, specifically heavy rain, even though some of these DSLRs tout that they're weather sealed, uh, often the body can be, but the lenses can uh, take in water and then start to fog up as it gets warmer. So I don't generally carry this out and about when there's heavy rain, but what I do is I take my smartphone out of my pocket, which is fully waterproof, and that allows me to get some of the heavy rain shots, you know, where, as we were speaking about, there's good video lows to be captured during some of these downpours. I just want to tell you and tip number five is to understand the video terms of A-roll and B-roll. A-roll is the video parts that tell the story directly, me telling you what's happening. This at the moment is A-roll. I'm choosing to tell you about what I'm doing. You could, I suppose, in theory, tell the whole adventure video by A-roll, but, you know, I think you'd get bored of my face on camera pretty quickly, or maybe not. For example, I could tell you that I'm currently walking up this field in snowy conditions, there's a bit of wind, and I'm with the dogs. Or I could do it another way. So that was B-roll. B-roll is the supporting video footage that shows the story. Ideally, you want a nice balance of both A-roll and B-roll to keep the viewer interested, especially in this YouTube era where, you know, some viewers have got limited attention span and can easily just click away from your video if they're getting bored. I guess one way of thinking about it would be to only use A-roll where you can't show it via B-roll. Viewers like to pick up on what's going on themselves. Visually, it's a lot quicker for them to see and understand than for you to explain it. So use B-roll, you know, to show what's going on and then leave the A-roll for the important bits where you need to tell them things that they couldn't possibly understand by showing it alone. And be sure to use A and B-roll together either to break up uh, overly long kind of talking sequences or when you want show and tell to complement each other together. For example, oh, it's a bit of a stark wintry morning today. Uh, we've got snow drifts, a uh, bit of a cold wind, um, and it's all looking a bit grey out there to be honest. Well, it's a bit of a stark weather day today. So, tip number six is to put some time into pre-planning what kind of video style you're wanting to make. For example, you're wanting a soft cinematic style of uh, adventure video filmed at 24 frames per second. Or maybe you've got in mind a higher energy action type video filmed at 60 frames per second. <laughs> Only six more miles to go until sunset! 
Better get a move on. These are just some of the thoughts that you need to have before you start on your video in order to make sure the end result is right. You can probably plan a lot of the shots that you want to get uh, along the way after you've set off. Certainly if you've got some time to think about it when you're doing your adventure. But the shots at the beginning of the video need some pre-planning in order for you to work out what A roll and B roll you want to capture in order to start the story off in the right fashion. I just wanna tell you and tip number seven is to avoid shaky cam. Actually quite annoying to watch, isn't it? And there's three simple solutions to this. One is to buy a tripod. You'll be amazed at how much your video quality improves when you set it on a sturdy fixed position like that. And I guess the main decision you need to make is how heavy and sturdy the tripod that you buy is. And that's kind of like a trade off between how much you're willing to carry and how much uh, stability and wind buffeting protection that you want. And also the bigger ones allow you to get higher and that can be important if you want the camera line of sight to be level with people's eyes and that kind of thing, which makes a difference. And these are essentially if you're going for that soft cinematic kind of adventure video look. And the second option is to buy a powered camera gimbal. These are absolutely great for doing vlogging on the move because it removes most of the unwanted camera shake, but just leaves a little bit of motion in there just to give the sense of travel. This one that I'm using at the moment is the DJI Osmo Mobile. Um, and I've been using this for the majority of this video where I've been on the move. And they've just released a new one actually, the DJI Osmo 2, priced at £129. And that's really excellent value for what you're getting for the money there. And makes the world a difference to vlog in. And you can also buy an optional tripod for, for it. And that's useful if you want to just stand it on the ground and use it as a normal tripod. You can also use it for very smooth scenery pans as well via the motorized function. So yeah, I'm really happy with this. Uh, it's a little bit fragile, I suppose. That's my only concern. I've sort of semi-broke it once on the snowboarding hole day. Uh, but they're cheap to replace and you just need to take care with it, I suppose. And the third option, if you don't want to carry a tripod or a gimbal, is to just perfect your technique in keeping the camera steady. If you put your DSLR on a neck strap, then you can use that kind of like as a stabilization technique. I'm holding this with one hand at the moment, better with two. Uh, but that's useful to stabilize the video. Or you can get creative and rest the camera on a raised static surface, such as trees, fence posts, whatever you can find really in order to give you that static shot. Yeah, clear audio is really important to video quality. Often it can be overlooked uh, in preference to video quality, but it's super important. You don't want your viewers having to go to the extra effort of trying to pick out what you're trying to say. And if you've got them sunk into a nice mood of a travel adventure video, uh, having poor audio actually sort of snaps them back out of that. And likely one of the major obstacles that you'll need to overcome is wind noise. And there's a simple solution to this for microphones that are designed for outdoor use, and that's to buy a wind muffler, otherwise known as a dead cat. It reduces most of the wind buffeting noise uh, that'll interfere with your voice, uh, but leaves some in there, which is a good thing, so that you can still portray, you know, a windy day. And another common solution to improving your audio quality is to buy one of these clip-on lavalier mics. I've been using this for most of this video and it's got a wind muffler on it as well. And I try to kind of keep it, you know, discreetly out of the way just so it's not obvious uh, that I'm getting the audio that way. And this is an excellent solution if you're wanting to get really clear speech from the subject. And it actually masks out the majority of the environment noise, which may or may not be what you're looking for. Uh, but if speech is your focus, this is the solution. And one challenge you might have is how to hook the mic up and a common problem can be dealing with all the wiring mess and that can slow down your video production. You can buy wireless mics but they're expensive and heavy and take setup time and are prone to wireless errors I suppose. So that's audio. Let's keep it clean folks. And tip number nine is to choose music that matches the mood of your video sequence. I'm not suggesting that you have to use music in every video, but it can be a very powerful way to reinforce mood, especially in the B-roll. And by way of example, you'll recall this previous shot that I took. Clearly it's gonna be inappropriate to use music like this. Although I have to say that is pretty damn cool. And you'd also be missing a trick if you used something in this shot that was say, summery and happy.
Nah, what I'm looking for is something that matches the mood of this scene, which is like cold, stark, desolate and wintry. Something like this. Perfect. And I hope that's demonstrated that if you match the right music to the video sequence that you can really amplify the mood that you're putting across to the viewer. But now comes the tricky part. Where do you get this plethora of mood music? Well, I actually use Epidemic Sound, uh, which is a subscription service, and they've got an excellent library of music and sound effects, but at a price. It's a little bit expensive really for an amateur video maker at £10 per month, but I'm just experimenting at the moment and I'm really finding it useful. I think it's better suited price-wise to professional YouTubers who want to save time in finding the right music and they want it to be royalty-free. There are other websites, of course, available with free, royalty-free music. I've used Ben Sound in the past and he's got a number of tracks that you can use for free if you give him credit. But yeah, I acknowledge it's a tricky one. And finally, tip number 10, enjoy creating your video memories. Ah. I wouldn't be surprised if after a little while you start to question, why the heck am I recording this trip? You know, why aren't I just enjoying it? And the reason I say that is because we've been through the exact same thing. In fact, Jill was quite hesitant for a while as to what it was all about, where's the benefit? But the key I would say is completing the process and actually getting memories out of it. I know you guys enjoy watching some of our stuff back, living our adventures with us, but I have to admit, we watch them probably as much as you do, and it's a great way to look back on trips and see it in detail again. Kind of the detail that you'd probably forget over time. So yeah, um, it's partly about you, partly about us. Call me selfish. So I think what I'm trying to say is I think you'll get more value watching the videos back and being able to see detailed memories. And that's useful for when you then go into the next time of making another one and it kind of justifies why you're putting in all the hard effort in order to capture the video, the audio, and all the complexities of that. So, good luck. Um, drop a comment below if uh, you've got any further questions. I think if there's enough interest in this video, I could probably put another video together with 10 finer tips. Um, but anyway, give me a like if that's been useful to you, and consider subscribing if you want to be notified about my new videos coming soon. Over and out. Running down the same road. Hope it leads me so I knew. Making up for lost time.